Hello guys, welcome to another video. I'm officially releasing my first game ever, Pie Tracing Maze. Wow. If you are one of those fine folks that follow this channel, you have probably already seen some videos about the development process of the game. Starting from when I made the first prototype using the ray casting technique with Matplotlib, then moving on to ray tracing, migrating to Pi game, struggling to optimize the game while adding new elements. A few months ago I knew basically nothing about game development, game engine, ray casting, ray tracing, pi game and number. All I knew was how to make some simple python scripts for data analysis, visualization and some other random stuff unrelated to gaming. Pi tracing maze is far from being a perfect game, but it is the result of several hours of experimentation and learning. And in this video I want to talk about the main characteristics and features of the game. The concept of the game is rather simple, a first person maze game where the player must find the exit to move to a new level, while being careful with enemies who shoot fireballs at the player. The player can run or shoot back and try to kill them. The maps get bigger and the enemies harder to eliminate as the score goes up, so the overall goal is to get the highest score possible. Each map is unique, so there's no way to memorize the maze path or replay a map. Every play is totally different. To help you in this task, a minimap appears in the corner of the screen, marking all the positions on the map that have already been visited, making it easier to explore the maze and not get lost in it forever. Two bars in the right side show the player's and the enemy's health. The number in the upper right corner shows the current score. If you die or give up on the map, you lose a point, going back to the previous level. Both the enemy and the player can launch fireballs, which cannot pass through walls, not even the lowest ones. Having a maximum duration of half a second, which is also the time interval for launching consecutive fireballs. Only one enemy can exist on the map at that time, and even if you manage to kill him, after a few moments he respawns in a random position near you. Similarly, if you lose him, he teleports to a closer position. In addition, the enemy manages to pass through corners in the walls where the player cannot. It may seem unfair, but all this is because the artificial intelligence is very limited. The graphics are generated with a simple version of the ray tracing technique. For each pixel, a ray is cast from the camera. This ray can bounce off one or more reflective surface and keep moving on, and only when it reaches an opaque surface where the base color of the pixel is defined. This base color depends on the object the ray hit, mapping texture for the floor, some walls and the sky. By the way, did you notice that the texture for the sky is the same as for the ground? It's just blown out and with different colors, but it uses the same pattern. I think it turned out nicely. It reminds me of the sky from where I live. After sunset and before sunrise, sometimes the clouds just turn pink. The walls are either cubic or spherical, cut at different heights. Both can be reflective, but the spheres looking like metallic shiny balls are way more impressive. After defining the pixel's base color, a new ray is created, which now goes towards the light source. And if something blocks the ray before it reaches its destination, this means that the pixel is in the shadow, so it is darknet. The primary light source is the sun, which is wandering in the sky. But the moment a fireball is launched, a second shadow ray is cast and the result is combined with the first, giving some double shadows. Fireballs are literally spheres with noise applied, following the trajectory of a parabola and disappear if they touch the floor or any walls. The enemy and player use the same model, with a mirrored head but different colors on the body. The model is quite simple, with radial symmetry, as it is easier to implement, and I think it looks like some kind of robot. As you may imagine, the rendering process is quite heavy, as it is done entirely by the processor, without using the GPU. The game is made entirely in Python, based on the Pi game and NumPy libraries but it has a special help from Numba to run decently. Numba transforms parts of the Python code into machine code, which allows the game to run them out 100 times faster. It feels just like magic. Probably without it, there wouldn't be any combat in the game, and the resolution would have to be much lower, a bit underwhelming. The only problem with Numba is that when it's compiling, the game freezes. 
but Numba has the option to cache the compiled code, so this only happens at the beginning, especially in the first run. After that, it should run smoothly. To improve performance a little more, I tested some optimization techniques in code. One of the most important being the DDA algorithm, which essentially makes the arrays skip empty cells on the map. In addition, I tried strategies to reduce the number of calculated pixels, like checkerboard rendering, where only about half of the pixels are calculated and the other half is estimated based on the values of the neighboring pixels. Another strategy is the double resolution rendering, where the resolution of the edges of the screen is 9 times smaller in comparison with the center circle. This yields to an interesting effect of blurred peripheral vision. And to keep a nice and somewhat steady frame rate, I use dynamic resolution. While the player is moving, by default the frame rate targets 60 FPS, increasing and decreasing the resolution to compensate for fluctuations. But the target value can be changed. When the player is completely still, without moving the camera, the target frame rate drops to 25 FPS generating sharper images, so that the player may enjoy the details of the game. But there is also the option to lock the resolution and let the frame rate vary freely. But there may be major slowdowns, especially in combat and places with a lot of reflections. Now for the sounds. In addition to the ambient music, different effects indicate important situations in the game. Like when the enemy is following you, or a fireball is launched, when an enemy dies, when you or the enemy responds, when you die, and when you find the exit. If the sound files are not found, some noises are generated that are used instead. Honestly, I don't know much about music, so the result was pretty lame, even creepy. But I think it's still more interesting than playing in silence. In the same way, if the textures file is not found, substitute textures are generated, which are also a bit weird, but match the generated sounds creepy wipe. That way, if you want to run the game only with the Python script, it is possible, just a bit weird. And if you are interested in playing this wonderful game, you have two main options. The first is to have a Python installation on your computer. Install the necessary libraries and download the script and the sound and texture files from my GitHub. Theoretically, it should work fine on Windows, Mac and Linux. The second option is to download a zip file with an executable I created with PyInstaller. I made it available on itch.io. After downloading, you just have to unzip and run it. But this version only works on Windows. Maybe in the future I will generate executables for Linux and Mac. Most of the components that make up the game were already presented in previous videos, but if you are interested in more technical details, leave a comment and I will try to answer, link to a corresponding video, or maybe even I can make a dedicated video depending on the topic. As always, the links are in the video description. Thanks for watching and until the next time.